Good morning, Chapel Hill. My name is Kara Coffey, and uh, the band and I are going to go ahead and uh, start with Holy Spirit Come. You're welcome to uh, just listen or sing along in your seats, um, but if you would start making your way there, we'd greatly appreciate it. Again, this is Holy Spirit Come.
the Holy One calls our young people to see visions. We come ready to see new visions. The Holy One calls our elders to dream dreams. We come ready to dream new dreams. The Spirit of the Holy One is poured out upon all flesh. We come ready to be filled with God's Spirit. Amen. And let's pray. O oh, precious God of breath and fire, of past and future, of all that is and all that will ever be, when Jesus knew he was going to the cross, he promised the disciples that he would not leave them alone. He assured them that the Holy Spirit would remain with them and teach them how to live and remind them of everything that he had said to them while he was here. When the day of Pentecost arrived, you poured out your spirit. You gave your disciples the power to speak in many languages, making tongues of flames dance above their heads. Today, God, as we come to worship you, we ask that you pour out your spirit on us, giving us all the wisdom and the courage and the love to live in peace as your followers. We ask you today in Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. Uh, before we continue, some introductions up uh, in the band with me today is Scott, Tracy, Carrie, and James. Um, we are so appreciative of these volunteers. In the back, Randine and Pat being fantastic as usual. And then look how beautiful our sanctuary looks. Uh, Mamie and Debbie, we appreciate both of those ladies so much for their faithful commitment to making our church an inviting, welcoming place. Um, I would invite you to stand with us now as we sing uh, Breathe on Us. Shaking, let hearts awaken. Our God is moving, forever changing us. There is a trembling, there is revival. The sound of worship, so great and glorious. Let hearts awaken, our God is moving, forever changing us. There is a trembling, there is revival, the sound of worship, so great and glorious. Oh. Come and fill this place with your prayers. 
seated. How about this great band, huh? Blessing. You know, one of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit, we say that love is fire, right? Through the Holy <laughs> Spirit. Every week when we leave this place, I tell Bruce, wow, our band is fire. Because you know, they are, right? Spirit-led, spirit-driven, powerful, amazing. So before we go to prayer today, just want to recognize a couple of people. First of all, Chaplain Posey is with us this morning. Good to have you with us. And Lonnie, thank you for bringing him to be with us. And our friend Cheryl is with us this morning with her mother over here on the front row. Cheryl has been with us since I've been here, I guess, and probably for a long time on Facebook every Sunday. Every Sunday, I text these messengers to her that says, I'm so glad to see you here. Well, guess what? She's here. Let's greet her. And we are celebrating today one of our members who was just confirmed was baptized this year is graduating from high school today. Amber, would you stand up? Yes. She's such a shy girl. What can we say? But she's a great acolyte, so there you have it. So, guys, it's time now. And am I forgetting anything? Oh, We've got visitors today, and we want to bless you and greet you and tell you all how glad that we are that you're all here today. There's several people here that I don't know, but actually, because of COVID, I'm not always sure <laughs> who's supposed to be here and who's not. But if you are here at Chapel Hill for the first time today or just stopping in for visits and you've been here before, we are so glad to see you. Let's greet them, folks. All right, it is time to say our prayers, people. Let's go to this God remembering that, oh, wait a minute. We've got another graduate back there, too. One more thing. We've got another graduate, and I'm afraid I'm going to miss one. Can you stand up, young lady? There she is, Aubrey. Congratulations. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't see well, as many of you know. Okay. Let's go to this God of ours in prayer today. We're going to pray to the Holy Spirit. We're going to ask God to come, and we're going to praise God for his presence. Let us center our hearts and center our thoughts in the grace and the power and the love of God. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, our ever-living and ever-loving God. We praise you today for your loving presence with us. Come, Holy Spirit, take and transform us. Take and transform our world and our societies. That broken people will find healing. That lonely people will find love. That bitter people will find peace. Fearful people will find your hope. Come, Holy Spirit. Take our world's leaders. Take our governments and renew us. That communication can be open. That all the relationships between hostile people and hostile nations will change. Live in those relationships, Holy Spirit, that a hunger for justice addresses the hunger for food that are felt by so many. Come, Holy Spirit, fill your church. Fill your church that our worship will be ever more pleasing to you, that prayers and our faith will change our minds. And instead of trying to get you to change yours, that our lives will make a real difference to real people in our real world. Come, Holy Spirit, 
be with our military men and women that are scattered all around the world and be with their families that are at home. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray for their protection. We pray for their faith. We pray for their salvation. And we pray for your love to encompass them. For our first responders, for all those people who give so much, come, Holy Spirit. And now come, Holy Spirit, fill our lives with your presence so that more and more every day, all that we do and all that we say and all that we hope will be an act of worship to you and an expression of love to others. That they may see us and they may see you. We ask this, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, our living Lord and our Savior. Amen. 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 And now, the peace of the risen Christ is with you all. And also with you. You are all invited to turn around to the people, wave gracious greetings, and let's be sure and wave at all of our families that are on Facebook today. We invite you to stand as we sing, Let the Heavens Open. You are welcome in this place. Welcome in our hearts. Come and have your way. God, meet us face to face. All consuming fire. Move without restraint. Breathe on us, Spirit, come. You're our heart's
may be seated. Good morning, Chapel Hill. Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, Lord open, open our, our hearts, hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. As the scriptures are read, you are invited to stand, sit, or kneel, whichever position creates an attitude of reverence and focus. Hear now these words from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, and the gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 8 through 17. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound from heaven, like the howling of a fierce wind, filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And when they heard this sound, a crown gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the regions of Libya, Borden Serene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them saying, they're full of new wine. Peter stood with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and ordered, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this, listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk, as you suspect. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit. In those days they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. From John, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That will be enough for us. Jesus replied, don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been with you all this time? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I have spoken to you, I don't speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me does his works. Trust me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on account of the works themselves. I assure you that whoever believes in me will do works that I do. They will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father can be glorified in the Son. When you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. 
If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will send another companion who will be with you forever. This companion is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world can't receive because it neither sees him nor recognizes him. You know him because he lives with you and will be with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated and remain seated as we sing, breathe. words of my lips 
May all of our hearts be acceptable to you. You're our rock, and you're our redeemer, and boy, we sure love you. As we lift up this time to you, in Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. So, happy Pentecost, everybody. I was thinking this past week about everybody that I know that really, really, really loves, like talking about the Holy Spirit and, and that lives with the Holy Spirit being driven in their hearts. You know, my mom was kind of one of those people, but she was a person that didn't really know how to talk about things like that. So she spent some time going through and finding little Peanuts cartoons that kind of said what she wanted to say and would hang them on the front of her refrigerator. And this one I remember particularly, it's where Lucy is looking very longingly at Schroeder, the little piano player guy. And she says, guess what? If you don't tell me that you love me right now, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna hold my breath until I completely pass out. And he, being kind of a mechanical, non-thinking kind of guy, kind of looks up from his little piano and says, well, breath holding in children is an interesting phenomenon. It could indicate a metabolic disorder. <laughs> 40 milligrams of vitamin B6 twice a day might be helpful. I think that's it. That's it. You just need some vitamin B6. <laughs> and you might consider eating some more bananas, some more avocados, and some beef liver. <laughs> and then he just puts his little head down and starts playing again, you know. And all she wants to hear is, I love you, right? She sits back and looks for a minute, and she says, Wow, all I want is some love, and all I get is beef liver. I wonder what my mother was trying to say to us about all that for a long, long time. But here's what I know, is that beef liver or nothing else is a substitute for love. There is no substitute for love, and there is no substitute for God's love. Amen? Yes. You know, sometimes it feels like in this world that we're living in today that people just need love. They don't know maybe that's what they need. People just need some hope. Maybe they don't know that's what they need. But you know who knows? The Holy Spirit knows. People never need a meaningless substitute. Never. Our hearts know when we are touched by the Spirit. Our hearts know when we are touched by the authentic love of God. Our hearts know when we are surrounded by people who share the authentic love of God. Amen? I think that's one of the things about being here at Chapel Hill. There's a spirit of love, I think, that sort of dwells here and lives among our people. It seems to me like, despite the fact that we had a COVID crisis, some of us didn't see each other for over a year. We had all kinds of things going on. This love remains in this church family. Last week, we were talking about it was Memorial Day, and... I looked out across this sanctuary, and so today I want to give a big shout out to the Klontz family. I hope I don't embarrass you with this. There were just lots of members of their families that were here. And I'll never forget, I walked out into the lobby. I was talking with Russell for just a minute about his family that was here. And I looked at him, I said, well, you have a lot of family members here. And he was so blessed. Did you guys ever see anybody that is so blessed that their face is shining? <laughs> I mean, just so blessed. It's like full of love so much that his face was glowing. I have to tell you that as a pastor, that is a wonderful thing to see because I know that the Holy Spirit has been here. It's a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing. I've 
sit over in my office usually before worship, and it's an interesting thing to me. I, I look out in my hallway, and there'll be like Sunday school teachers out in the hallway with a bunch of little bowling pin looking things and balls, and kids are laughing, and everybody's having fun, and, and it looks like the teachers kind of glow, you know? What is it that makes that happen? It's love. It's absolutely God's empowered love. You know, we see in the 34th chapter of Exodus, there's a story about Moses on the mountaintop. And after being in the presence of God for several days, he was receiving the, ta the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments. His face is glowing. And he is glowing so much that he has to put something over his face to keep from scaring all the people off, right? They don't have any idea what could possibly be happening to him. And just imagine that, you know, just imagine that, to be carrying so much of God's spirit and God's power with you that people look at you and, and are just amazed to see it. But you see, for Moses, it was only temporary because receiving the law could not save God's people. It could instruct them. It could teach them. It could teach them how not to die by drinking bad water and eating awful food. It could teach them how not to be like other people in the world that were sacrificing their children and just all kinds of stuff. He was guided by God. He was guided by the cloud of, of uh, the pillar of cloud and by the pillar of glory and fire, remember? But as powerful as his relationship was with our God, he was not born again through the love and through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He was not carrying the Holy Spirit in him. You see, Christians, we are honored by this God. We are loved by this God. We receive new birth from our God, and we receive the Holy Spirit. We receive the gifts of love, the gifts of God in our hearts, and God begins to move wonderful way through our life. Jesus is present to us. You know, John the Apostle writes that love is from God and that in the love of God was made manifest that God sent his only son into the world that we might live, that we might be saved and live through him. And in this love, not that we have loved God, but he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And if God loves us, let us love one another. You see, in this powerful passage today, what we see is this Acts 2 spirit-driven church. Amen? Amen? Kind of like listening to our band today. <laughs> And they are absolutely on fire with Holy Spirit love. Absolutely on fire with love for people through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's just an amazing thing. You know, God's mission is always driven with power that causes us to do loving things for other people. The fire of heaven lit on those disciples as heaven's unique kind of love and grace filled them all up. You know, you think about that. Spirit is grace. And so we have this grace that just continually draws us closer to God and makes us where we are people that can live and love and be with other people, that lead people to God. It opens our hearts to believe. The Emmaus community, and I talk about the Emmaus community a lot because that was my dad's community. It was the place where my dad found the Holy Spirit. The Emmaus community says that the Spirit of God 
woos us back. It influences us. It pursues us until we will come back to this God. I think about all the people that I know that have been affected by Kairos. You think about that now, okay? We know a lot of people that have served at Kairos through the years. Look at how their lives have been affected. Look at how the people they served have been affected. People who were hopeless, locked up in prison, found the love of Christ, and it changed their life forever. Why? Because God is love. And when the Holy Spirit comes to dwell among us, this is what happens. It gives God's people life. I like to think about Pentecost like this. You know, last week, it was Ascension Week here. We didn't really spend a lot of time talking about that, but it's one of the most powerful days of our Christian year. It's like the day... That Jesus, one minute, is standing on the mountaintop looking at all the people who follow him, right? And the next minute, he's gone. I used to have a picture on my wall that all you could see were all these disciples looking up and a pair of feet in the sky. Because <laughs> I just wanted to remember what it is that we should know about Jesus, that he's still with us. We just can't see him. And instead, the Holy Spirit is with us. Spirit makes us whole, okay? The Spirit makes our faith life whole. And without it, it's hard to ever be whole. It's a gift from our good Father. And a lot of people don't really understand it, but our good Father gives us good, good gifts. And Matthew, Matthew says, when they ask for bread or give them a snake, who among you will give your children a stone when they ask for bread? Or who among you will give them a snake when they ask for fish? If you who are evil know how to give good gifts, how much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those who ask him? Well, the Holy Spirit is our good, good gift from our good, good Father. He is never our enemy. He would never give us a gift that would harm us. Instead, he gives good, good gifts to us, to his children. He gives us Jesus' presence all the time. And this is what the message of the Spirit is today, that we have a good, good Father. Chris Tomlin wrote these words about our good, good father, and I think they're very, very powerful. Most of you know this song, I think. But he writes, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but have heard the tender whisper of love dead in the night. You tell me you're pleased that I'm never alone because you know what we need before we ever say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I am loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You see, God is our good, good father gives us good, good gifts of Holy Spirit Church. Good, good gifts. I was serving a church that hosted a birthday party for two of our kids. Literally every kid in the church came, and then it looked like half of their school came. There were just so many people. It was so fun. Anyway, just as the party was coming to an end, this host parent began to give out goodie bags. And every little bag had some kind of a little toy in it. You know, a little ball that said Jesus loves you or something that was really cute. A couple of little books with Bible stories. And every bag had a little cross in it that said, Jesus is your gift. And I 
thought, man, that's great, you know, really nice. I was really touched by the thoughtfulness of this because there were so many people and they had made so many extras and thank God, you know, they just want to make sure they had enough. But the thing that I noticed that was really meaningful to me was, was that everybody received one of those goodie bags, everybody. Nobody was left out. All those kids who'd been perfect gifts, they got one. They were completely kind of nuts and hyper after eating way too much cake and way too many cookies and everybody else's cookies they could get their hands on, they got one. If they were kind of standoffish, if they were kind of shy, they didn't participate a whole lot, they still got one. And this is a true story. Even the kid who took a croquet mallet and hit a gigantic wooden croquet ball through the window of a car still got one of those goodie bags. It's true. Even I got one. Parents got one, right? And I thought to myself, man, it's kind of like heaven. You know, whether we get gifts from God, it's like heaven speaking into us. It's not dependent on how we look. It's not dependent on what neighborhood we come from. It's not dependent on what language we speak. It's not dependent on who our parents are or if they're faithful or not or if we're educated or not. We get this gift because we're invited to the party and we came, you know? Our Heavenly Father has invited us to be a part of His life and His party forever. And He today has a parting gift for us. He doesn't want us to ever leave here without it. God wants us to receive His Spirit. Amen? God wants us to live in His Spirit and to carry the love that He sends to us that exists here among our people out to our neighbors. And so, let us pray. Let's pray together as we ask the Holy Spirit to come. Jesus, today, I receive your Holy Spirit. I welcome you to move in and through my life. Come, Holy Spirit, have your way in my heart. Wake me up to your love and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. On this day, as we share the power of God together and we share the Spirit of God together, let us also share the body and the blood of Jesus together, amen, as God's children. Are we up here? Okay. Church, let's say our prayer together. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Say with me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, hear the good news that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves that God's love, that, that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Jesus Christ. 
glory to God. Amen. And now, Christ be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Holy One. It is right, good, and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give our thanks to you who poured out tongues of fire on the disciples at Pentecost. You promised to give our young people visions of a better world, our elders dreams of peace. All who are led by your spirit are your children, joint heirs with Christ in both suffering and glory. And so, with your creatures on earth and all the heavenly chorus, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and holy is your child Jesus who sent the Holy Spirit to be with us so that we would not be left alone. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. broke it, saying, take all of it, take this and eat, all of you. This is my body, broken for you. Whenever you eat it, do so in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for the healing of the entire world. Whenever you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of grain and grape, the fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be the body of Christ filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit for the healing of the world. Sender of dreams, spirit of truth, giver of visions, you are the one God to whom we offer our praise and our thanks. Amen. And now together let us say that prayer Jesus left us all by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our church has an open table, and you are certainly welcome to be with us.
God, we just give you thanks for filling us up with holy food and with holy wine. Send us forth, O oh God, in this place, blessed by your spirit that we might give ourselves to others. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.
Also, I want to announce the Kairos Walk on the Ruben Torres Unit coming up on the 7th through the 10th of July. And there are people, we, we hope that you will pray for this. There's a table out in the lobby where you can like sign up for some time to pray for the people that will be a part of that walk. Also, to buy a meal for some of the people that will be there. So, <laughs> as we leave this place today, I think we've heard the most amazing holy music today. We've heard holy words read. We have received holy food. And now God is sending us forth to be his holy people in the world. Amen? Amen. Let us all be sent forth now by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. 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 Please stand.
Cause that's just the kind of God you are. Amen. Go forth and be blessed. We will see you next week. One, two. It's in the empty room.